Hi folks, it's Andy, the analytical preacher. I've stated a number of times, a number of different places, that the Bible provides us with a comprehensive worldview. It's not just do this or don't do that. It doesn't just use examples from thousands of years ago. It's not just applicable to cultures thousands of years ago. The Bible provides a comprehensive view of this is how the world works. This is what human nature is like. And it's a platform from which we can assess even the most modern issues of our day. That's the beauty of the Bible. That's how dynamic Scripture is. And so the Bible allows us to look through its lens and to see things like modern technology, such as artificial intelligence, and really form an objective, rational opinion about artificial intelligence. And I'm not really going to go into a deep description of AI here in this podcast. I think it's a fairly well-known term, really easy to look it up. So when I talk about artificial intelligence or AI, I'm, I'm really including this broad category of technologies where computers, where software, they are either programmed or more often they are trained on data, kind of put that in quotes, They're trained on data. Algorithms are built. Intelligence is built off of data, off of repeated exposure to pictures or to numbers or to diagnoses. And they're being programmed to, in some sense, they're learning, in some sense, to think like a human mind. So these artificial intelligence categories, as with so many new technologies down through the year, maybe really as with most new technologies down through the year, artificial intelligence, it's brought a lot of concern, a lot of consternation, and probably really it's brought a lot of fear. So there's, of course, excitement about artificial intelligence. Can we really get a machine, a computer, and the software to really think like a human mind? How is it that my mind recognizes my mother's face as different from my nephew's face. And can I train a computer so that it could recognize, hey, that's Andy's mother and that's Andy's nephew. And there's a lot of excitement about the possibilities of being able to do that. I think in the case of artificial intelligence, I think the concern, the misunderstandings, the fear, the anxiety are probably just as large as the excitement over the future possibilities. So I just want to go through for the next few minutes how you would take a biblical view of this. What does looking through a biblical lens at something like artificial intelligence, what does that look like? How do we go about it? I think I would start, if I'm again looking through the lens of the Bible, I would start by saying we need to look at humans, how we're created, what we're created for, and how we're told to use and interact with the rest of God's creation. And we are not created to be passive participants in life and only live in fig leaves, in caves. But we're told that we're made in God's image and God is, among other things, a creator. God is the creator. And God has said, I have created this beautiful earth. I'm putting you in it. You can't create things like different elements and energy, but you can recreate, reposition, repurpose within the creation that I'm giving you. And that's exactly what God tells us to do, not to be passive participants, but to be active, to try to understand the creation that he's gifted to us, to even control and manage the creation on God's behalf. So, of course, we can go to the very first chapter of the very first book in the Bible, Genesis 1.28. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Subdue it understand it. God tells us in another part of Genesis, he actually tells us a couple of different times that he's made creation to work consistently. Creation will work consistently 
Now subdue it. Go understand it. What today we would call science. Go engage in scientific research so that you understand creation and then have dominion over it. In a sense, in modern language, we would say, take our understanding, take our scientific know-how and turn it into tools and technologies that assist us in managing and having dominion over this world in which we live. So we know developing technology, developing software, developing any kind of tool like that, any kind of technology is certainly biblical. And we go a little further. If we go to what's called the wisdom literature, in the book of Ecclesiastes, the wise King Solomon writes this, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. If the iron is blunt and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength. But wisdom helps one to succeed. Obviously, we would restate that in modern English as you need to work smarter, not harder. You need to use your brain, which was gifted to you by God, to figure out how this world he has put you in that worked consistently. You need to use your brain to figure out how the world works consistently. And you need to develop tools. And over time, you need to develop better tools, sharper tools. You need to always be improving, always be resharpening the edges of your tools. Be smart. Don't just use more brute strength to do what you want. But wisdom helps one succeed. And we can clearly see how something like artificial intelligence could help us to succeed. Artificial intelligence may be able to identify threats, natural threats or human threats, may be able to identify them better than we can identify them now. And the better that we can pinpoint tornadoes, typhoons, hurricanes, terrorist activities, whatever it is, the better our world is going to be. They say that artificial intelligence that scans x-rays or looks at blood work to make diagnoses can actually make diagnoses more accurately than highly trained physicians can make them. Now, the machines have to be trained by the highly trained physicians. So they get data from all of these highly trained physicians looking at all of this blood work, looking at these CAT scans, looking at these x-rays. And they say, when the, phys- when the physicians saw this, they diagnosed it this way. Occasionally they didn't, but it turns out that was actually the right diagnosis in the end anyway. And because humans can get tired because humans can be burdened down by other things in their personal life, because humans suffer from certain biases. They may not always make the right diagnosis, but if you can teach the machine, think like a doctor with all of his medical training, think like the biochemist with all of her medical and biochemical training. And when they see this, They understand it means a diagnosis of this. And so if machines can do it faster and more accurate, that's going to help us to live better. Pharmaceutical companies are saying they will be able to develop better drugs, more effective drugs, faster and cheaper than if it's just them doing it with human power. So clearly artificial intelligence can be seen as sharpening the edge of the tools that we already work with. So it fits right into a biblical worldview. But in order to completely look through a biblical lens at something like artificial intelligence, we need to look at one more verse from Ecclesiastes. Again, King Solomon in the wisdom literature. And he writes in chapter 7, verse 10. Say not, why were the former days better than these? For it is not from wisdom that you ask this. Here's the truth. It is a natural tendency for humans to be a little apprehensive, to have anxiety, to even be fearful about the future. We don't know what's coming. We don't understand everything that's new. We oftentimes feel we have little control over what's yet to take place. It's just as natural on the other side of that coin for humans to be a little nostalgic and and honestly to be a little too nostalgic about the past. And so when you put these together, 
you have folks who are saying, why can't we just go back and live a simpler life before all this technology took over our lives? And they're fearful of what technology is going to do. And King Solomon is really saying, that's just not possible. You can't stop progress. You can't stop things from getting better. And really, it's not real wise to say, why were things better before we had all this technology? Because the truth of the matter is, your nostalgia is blinding you to the objective facts that progress is progress. And so we can go back 200 years into the 1820s when railroads were first being built out across America. And that same anxiety about a new technology existed then. It was going to harm humans. It was going to harm animals. Uh, dairy cows weren't going to be able to produce the, the right kind of milk. Pregnant women were going to suffer. The fetuses were going to suffer. The environment was going to have these horrible things happen from the rumbling of the train tracks. And we now know none of those, not a single one of those concerns came true. You jump forward 200 years into the 2020s, and now we stand and we're concerned about artificial intelligence. But the Bible is telling us objectively New technologies can be good. Humans should continue to subdue and have dominion, continue to progress, and they should continue to make better tools and sharpen the tools with which they work. That's how the Bible would address that fundamental issue. The second issue, though, is people say, I'm not just fearful of new technology. I'm not just fearful of something different or fearful of going into the future that I don't fully know, understand, and can't always control. But there's really a concern, they say, that AI is going to take over the world, that artificial intelligence is going to become evil, and that in taking over the world and becoming evil, these machines will eventually crowd out humans and make us extinct. But the Bible pushes our thinking here in a different direction as well, because this is what the Bible says, and it says it very plainly. Technology is not evil. Tools are not evil. The truth is, the Bible says, humans are evil. Should we be worried about evil in the future? Absolutely. Should we be worried about people being taken advantage of, misused, harmed in the future? Absolutely. In what regard? by other humans. And the Bible is abundantly clear on this. Jesus talking in Mark chapter 7 says, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of a person, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Jesus' half-brother James and his letter in the New Testament, James chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, agrees with his older brother saying this, Each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. We don't need to fear artificial intelligence becoming dominant, becoming evil, or harming the machines harming us. What the Bible would teach us and what history absolutely teaches us is we need to be concerned about how humans use artificial intelligence, even things that we automatically think about as destructive and harmful. A bomb, dynamite, is not destructive and harmful. Dynamite is not evil. Dynamite is neutral. And in fact, we can come up with a thousand scenarios of where dynamite is positive. There's been a massive earthquake, which caused a landslide which has dammed up a river. And now you've got animals that need to migrate from the eastern side to the western side of the river to mate or to give birth or to get to their feeding grounds for the summer, and they can't traverse the river. And you've got herds and herds of animals that are facing death. You've got people and animals living downstream 
from where this landslide has dammed up the river. And water is quickly becoming a major issue for all of the people and animals living downstream. And the Corps of Engineers comes in and says, give us a couple of hours and a few sticks of dynamite and we'll clear this landscape back to looking like what it naturally looked like before that earthquake happened and that landslide occurred. An explosive element like dynamite, frankly, can it's neutral and it can be used for positive purposes. Now, of course, dynamite can also be used to blow up your enemies and harm other people. And I'm not quite going down that road. You know, there's the saying, dynamite doesn't kill people, people kill people. I'm not quite going down that road because here's the truth. The Bible says, yes, people do kill people. And that's why we need to have some restrictions in the Old Testament. God set forth 613 laws. In the New Testament, Paul writes, for example, in Romans 13, that God ordains governments to put laws in place to keep us from harming each other. So just like with dynamite, we can't just let every eight-year-old walk into a drugstore and buy a few tons of dynamite. It needs to be regulated. Narcotics can be a beautiful thing for those who are suffering after an accident, after surgery, with some type of a debilitating illness. Narcotics can be great. Narcotics can also be used to kill people and to destroy lives and destroy families. The narcotic itself is neutral. It's not evil. It's how humans use and misuse it. And so we need some parameters around who and what we do with dynamite, who and what we do with narcotics. And it would be the same way with AI. So where Christians should fall out is to say, we want to be very careful because AI could easily be used by corrupt businesses, by dictatorial governments, or just by those evil people that want to blackmail other people. AI could be used in a number of just very nefarious ways. And we need to make sure as Christians that we're aware of that and that we're promoting legal processes that put the appropriate restrictions around the use of artificial intelligence. Again, in the hands of a corrupt business, in the hands of a corrupt politician, in the hands of a gangster that wants to blackmail, AI could definitely be misused as anything can and has been by humans misused. That's where Christians need to be careful. Keep your eye on the other humans whose evil desires can cause them to take a neutral thing like artificial intelligence and misuse it for their benefit and your harm. But Christians should not stand in opposition to the development of artificial intelligence software. We shouldn't stand in opposition to the training of these algorithms on these massive sets of data because ultimately some real benefit can come from sharpening our tools in those ways. And it should allow us to further subdue creation and have dominion over it. Artificial intelligence itself the Bible would have no problem with. And as a Bible-based Christian, we can support the existence of and the further development of artificial intelligence. Our concern as Christians is always, how might an evil person use that? And how do we regulate and prohibit and punish that before it happens or if it happens? Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, this is Andy.